Hey everyone, Mike Andes with LandscapeBusinessCourse.com and today I am going to be reacting to so many of the comments and emails and a response that I have got from a video I made a couple days ago about buying a new mower and the things you need to think about before you buy a new mower. Now I know everyone's trying to read the text behind me on this whiteboard, but we're gonna get to that, I'm gonna explain myself, but I need to do this because I'm not gonna be able to respond back to all the emails or the comments, uh, most of the emails, and uh, the direct messages and things like that. So I'm going to explain some things and I'm going to show uh, a comment that actually came from Spencer Lawn Care. So in the video that I made a couple days ago, I was referencing Spencer Lawn Care video and they responded back to me. So I feel like now I can actually say who they are because when I say people's names, everyone thinks that I'm against them and that's not the case. I'm trying to bring a different perspective so that way when we make business decisions, we're making them based upon numbers and not based upon what everyone else is doing on YouTube. All right, so that's my perspective and you can tell from my mine and Spencer Lawn Care's uh, correspondence that there's no like hate. We don't hate each other. So I'm gonna pop it up here so you can read it. You can you know stop your screen or whatever. You can read the, the message that Spencer Lawn Care uh, commented on my video and I appreciate them watching and I want to make it very clear. I'm a subscriber to them. I like their videos a, a lot. I, I watch most of them, not all of them, but most of them. And the one that popped up on Saturday is the one I responded to about buying a new mower. They went to a Toro dealership and basically kind of showed the highlights of a new mower. And I, I was trying to be very clear that I, I'm not against zero turns, but I wanted to show the numbers behind it. So now I need to address all the comments, questions, concerns, people not so happy about some of the things that I said, and I'm going to clarify my stance and I'm doing this only because there are so many people that have questions about this stuff and I want to make it very clear because I, again I am doing this for my 18 year old version of me starting a lawn care business I am not doing this for those of you out there that are watching videos on YouTube for entertainment I am doing this for the business person that is serious about growing their company they're wondering why they aren't making money in their business they're wondering why they they work all so hard and there's no money in the bank at the end of the day because that's a majority of landscapers okay and so I want to go over some of these numbers I want to go over these things I want to make it very clear I am not against Spencer Lawn Care I did not use their name in the first video and I only use people's names in videos because I do want to attract their audience to give a secondary perspective so some of you are like you're trying to get their audience you're trying to like use their name in your, your videos you're right 110 percent I'm trying to tap into that audience that sees their video it sees all the features and then is able to get the perspective from a number standpoint because that's not usually what's offered in their videos that's not to say that their videos are not good they're very entertaining they're very educational like those are all very good things but I'm trying to get the business and the number side of things okay I'm not gonna get a lot of views I know that the other side makes more views I'm trying to educate the person who's really serious like I was when I was young as a teenager trying to figure this stuff out and watching videos on YouTube Okay, so first things first, form 4136. So this is a tax credit for off-road vehicles. This is gonna be for industries like farming, landscaping is another industry that we can use this for. I wanna make this very clear. The vehicle needs to be off-road, which means you cannot get this tax credit for your trucks and for your equipment that goes on the road. You can only get it for mowers, wee whackers, chainsaws, the smaller equipment. If you look at the function of your total tax liability when it comes to fuel, fuel taxes, like I would imagine that probably less than 10% of it is actually off-road mowers and weed ears because most of the time your big trucks that you put like you know 30 gallons of fuel into, that's the ones that use most of the fuel. Okay, now if you have big zero turns, obviously that's gonna be a bigger differential. You might have 20, 30% of your fuel that you use in your business is actually off-road. But keep this in mind, because if you are taking a tax credit on all of your fuel, you can get in big trouble, all right, from the IRS. And trust me, is our audits uh, rare? Yes, but when they happen, you better make sure you've done things right. There is absolutely a penalty for taking tax credits on form 4136 for vehicles that are on the road and that they use the road and there is a federal tax of 18.4 cents currently if you're watching this in the future that might change 
18.4 cents is a federal tax that for every gallon of fuel, there's 18.4 cents of tax to maintain the roads, keep the highways maintained, all the rest of it. By filling out a form 4136 and keeping track of the amount of fuel that you use off road, you're able to get this 18.4 cents deducted, and as a tax credit, I should say, uh, you're gonna get a tax credit for that money back. Now, again, that means that I need to spend a thousand gallons, or I need to use a thousand gallons of fuel. I'm gonna save $184 and I'm gonna spend $3,000 to get it. So $3 per gallon I'm using here, $3 per gallon. I'm gonna spend $3,000, I'm gonna save $184. So I'm saving like maybe 6%. So literally, I'm going to save 6% on my fuel, okay? 6% off of my fuel for literally probably 10 to 20% of my fuel. So we're literally talking about a two to 3% tax credit on your total fuel bill. So let's just be clear, this is not free. All right, so for, the, for everyone that was responding back to me saying that I shouldn't have added in the fuel cost to the, the hourly rate that, or hourly cost that it was for a mower is incorrect. Having the Form 4136 does not make your fuel free. It gives you maybe a few percent discount, maybe it's a little bit higher, maybe you're gonna say four or five percent, six percent, if you are, uh, you know, have big mowers, you know, big zero turns and you're mowing back and forth all day long. But for the majority of, most of our fuel is used in trucks that actually run on the road and we are supposed to pay for taxes on that stuff. For weed eaters, blowers, and you know, chainsaws, a thousand gallons, my goodness, it's gonna be a lot. Now, am I against you saving $184? No, that's fantastic. Would I spend two or three of hours of my time and bring my accountant in to save $184? No, so make sure it's very simple. A lot of, a lot of people are t using ta tax cred, but keep in mind, if I have to pay $100, if I have to pay $100 for a service like tax credit or my account to, to take the form 41 and for 4136 and create it themselves, you got to keep in mind that I've literally got to get like 600 gallons of, off, of, of gas for off-road vehicles, off-road equipment before I even break even, okay? So you got to take into account the time it takes you to save this $184. All right. Next thing is, this is a big, big thing I gotta make clear, and I think most people understand this, but again, I'm not talking to those of you who have a lot of experience, I'm talking to the person that I was when I was 14, 15, 16, trying to learn business, trying to learn landscaping on the internet, okay? A write-off is not equal to free, okay? And a deduction on your taxes is not equal to a tax credit. So when people say, oh, well, I'm gonna get this a write-off, so like that disqualifies the fact that I have to pay for something. That is so ludicrous. Like it gets me very, very unhappy and angry because people make poor buying decisions in the name of a write-off because they're like, oh, like it's a write-off, so like I can just buy it. It's as if it's like, oh, it's free, like just write it off. Like it's free, it's not free. Okay, a write-off means that you're able to take that money as a deduction off of your income, so let's say I make $50,000 on my business and I'm gonna take a write-off of $10,000. It does not mean I get that $10,000 piece of equipment for free. What it means is I get from $50,000, my adjusted income is gonna to go to 40,000. So instead of paying a percentage on 50%, let's say I'm at 10% uh, uh, taxes, or let's say 20% taxes on $50,000 in my net income. That means that I'm going to, sp I'm going to have to pay $10,000 in taxes. Now, if I go get a $10,000 piece of equipment, I do not get $10,000. My tax bill does not go from, from 20,000 to 10,000. That does not happen. What's going to happen is I'm gonna have my adjusted gross income going from 50,000 to 40,000. Now I'm gonna pay 20%. I'm gonna pay $8,000 in taxes if I'm paying 20%. So what that means is I saved two thousand dollars in taxes. I did not save ten thousand. Okay, you got to keep that in mind when you talk about write-offs. You're only saving your tax bracket number. 
So if I'm paying 22% taxes, which is the average amount that most of us are probably paying, because that's the, how much you pay if you're making between 40 and $80,000 on the bottom line of your tax return, like the net adjusted, you know, gross adjusted uh, income that you have on your tax return, probably between, if you're between like 40 and 80%, your federal tax bracket is gonna be at 22%. If you're making like 10 or $15,000 on the bottom line of your business, do not kid yourself that a write-off is going to help you. You literally are making no money to have a deduction against. So if you're not profitable, if you're not making profit, write-offs don't help you at all, okay? Yes, you can carry them forward, you can carry forward losses, all the rest of it, but in that year, it does not help you. A write-off is only effective if you're making net profit at the end of the day, and if you're trying to keep this number down, like, oh, I don't wanna be in a higher tax bracket, keep in mind, your write-offs, now become less and less effective because if I'm only making fifteen or twenty thousand dollars in net like profit and that's being adjusted, you know, taking my personal income, I literally might be getting a ten percent, you know, uh, you know, in, in a ten percent tax bracket. Therefore, when I take a write-off, I'm literally only saving ten percent. So write-off does not equal free. And when someone says that you get a deduction, that's a write-off. When someone says credit, that means I'm actually going to get money from the government. Okay, that's what the form 4136 is, a credit. They give you money back, okay? So keep this in mind, it's very important. When people say like, oh, it's a write-off, just buy it. Like, no, like, if you're not making money in your long care business and you're doing things in the name of write-offs, you are absolutely doing it incorrectly, okay? Do not think that if you can write something off as a business expense, it is free. It's crazy, it's ludicrous, especially if you're in a lower tax bracket where your write-off percentage is actually less. Okay, the more money you make, the more profits you make, if you start getting 30, 40, 50% that your tax bracket is in, then yeah, write-offs become more and more important. But guess what, you have the profit, you can do these things, okay? Last thing, I, I got so many people emailing me about this. They're like, hey, like, uh, you know, people are not sponsored. They get free equipment for their videos. Okay, let me be very clear. You might not get money for a video, but if you get free equipment to make a video about a certain brand and their mower, you're sponsored. That is the definition of a sponsorship, is if you get something in return for the work that you do. So the reason I talked about this in my last video is because it's very important to keep this in mind, and I really feel it's important, I hope this kind of prods our industry to disclose whether they're getting paid, whether they're getting free equipment, or what their relationship with the manufacturer is, because it's very important. If I'm a young person and I'm watching these videos on YouTube, and they're going on and on about how much this money, how much these features are gonna save them, and how great this is gonna be for their business because it has a light bar and they can work at night, or whatever it might be, features, right? And I think, oh, well, that's great. That means I'm gonna run a successful business. They don't get the context that that person's probably getting paid or getting free equipment from the manufacturer. Even if that free equipment is going to the audience of the person that is making the video, there's a certain amount of brand equity that that person's getting for creating the video, for creating the content. And I'm fine with that. I love the fact that people get paid. I love the fact that our manufacturers in this industry are giving back to our creators. I am like so 110% about that. But please, I want this to be very clear so that when people are making business decisions and spending $10,000, $15,000, $40,000 on a truck, that they're actually getting what is true and real and they can get a unbiased opinion or if it's biased, they know it's biased. It's okay to have biased opinions. It's okay to have sponsored posts. I'm not against that. I want these people to make money. If someone came to me today and offered me you know, $20,000 to review a mower, I would do that. Now, you have to ask yourself, would I be completely objective in, that, in saying that mower? Probably not, but I wouldn't, like you can't be. Now, if I was, and I was like actually honest, I need to give you the feedback, I need to give you the information that hey, I'm getting paid $20,000 to make the review of this mower. Am I insinuating or saying that other YouTubers make $20,000 for review? No, I'm just making a point. And that is, I am going to have a tarnished opinion of a product if I've been paid for it. I'm not going to say it's anything negative about it traditionally, like most people are just not. And so, just keep these things in mind when it comes to buying mowers, when it comes to, I'm just kind of responding back to a lot of your feedback, I might just 
take this uh, YouTube link, send it back to everyone that's asked me questions about this. But again, off-road, the Forum 4136 is less than you think. It is not free. It does not disqualify. It does not take away the cost of fuel on your calculation of what equipment costs per hour. That's false. Write-offs do not equal free, okay? If you're going, going to get a write-off for your piece of equipment, you better make sure you're actually profitable, and that way you are actually saving some money, because if you're not profitable and you're going after write-offs, you're not saving anything on taxes. And keep in mind, when it comes to uh, YouTube and videos like this, I want manufacturers to give our YouTube creators money, but I also want our YouTubers and people in this community to be a very transparent about if they're getting money or if they're getting free equipment, because if someone's giving me free equipment, I am not gonna say anything bad about it because guess what I want the free equipment I want that gravy train to keep going on and I want these people to get free equipment and their business to do better and then make more money on YouTube and with these sponsorships it's very very healthy for the community for these people to get money but we've got to disclose this for the person that's just getting started that is making business decisions and businesses decisions that could potentially lead to their failure if they're not looking at the numbers I'm Mike Andes, LandscapeBusinessCourse.com. I hope no one was offended. This is not the reason for this video. I hope I made, I made that very clear up front. Uh, but please um, comment below, subscribe to Spencer's Lawn Care. They are amazing channel. TQ, they're awesome. Like definitely great for uh, watching them every single day. They make content. I don't know how they do it. It's, it's like they grind, they hustle. If you actually try to make a video a day vlog style after a whole day's worth of work doing all the editing, they deserve a lot of love. So there's nothing in my heart against Spencer's Lawn Care. There's nothing against any of these other YouTubers. I'm just trying to create the numbers and the business side that I fell into the trap of when I first got started buying the equipment, buying the trucks, doing all these things because it was so popular on YouTube, but I never got the numbers behind it. And it's only been, you know, you have to go get, I, didn't, I don't want you to have to go get an MBA, go have to go like talk to a bunch of people, learn a bunch of mistakes, go into a bunch of debt, you know, you have a bunch of loans on equipment and all the rest of it, and then have to figure this stuff out. So please, um, I, I just hope it comes from, uh, you understand it comes from a good place. I'm just trying to help the person who's just getting started. I have nothing in my heart that's negative against Spencer's Lawn Care or anyone else. Thanks so much everyone. We'll see you in the next video.